Hi everybody and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler. In today's video we are going to quickly have a look at the differences between mitosis and meiosis. This is part of your exam guidelines for grade 12. You do need to be able to differentiate between the two. You need to be able to tell me the products at the very end and why we need these two processes. So I'm going to walk you through their differences, how to tell the difference and then finally what is their purpose. Now, if you are new here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed with your notifications turned on because I post every Tuesday and Thursday. If you are a matric and you're thinking about improving your marks, then you should think about joining my membership here on my YouTube channel. It's got lots of live lessons, check your understanding videos, um, members only videos as well. Um, you also get a copy of my study guide for free, no extra charge. And speaking of study guide, you can actually purchase your own study guide on my website, missangler.co.za. Now let's dive in to the general differences between these two cellular division processes, which is exactly what they are. They are both cellular division, but the products they make at the end are very different and the reasons why they occur are different. The thing that they do have in common, however, is meiosis and mitosis play a really important role in reproduction, but I'll get to that in a later part of the video. The main things that are different in these two cellular divisions is when we undergo mitosis, we want to create identical cells. Whereas its partner, meiosis, at the end, will produce non-identical cells. Now, the reasons for this, again, I'll elaborate when I go into a little bit more detail later in the video, but it comes down to their overall function and purpose. Now, the next most important thing between mitosis and meiosis is you in mitosis begin with one cell and you create two identical cells. So these two cells are identical to one another in chromosome number, in genetics, everything. In meiosis, however, you go from one cell and you actually produce four cells at the end. But these four over here are all non-identical in their genetic makeup, in their chromosome number, from its parent cell. And I'm going to quickly walk you through what you need to look out for, how to describe the differences and what are the final products and its function. Now, as always, I like to keep these videos really simple and easy to understand. And so I'm going to walk you through the major things you need to know for the exam, right? Keep it simple. So mitosis, right? Mitosis is cellular division where we are making identical cells. I want you to know, though, that the interphase stage of mitosis is also present in meiosis as well. And interphase, remember, is the phase of the cell cycle where the cell is doing its like regular everyday job. If you want more information about mitosis, you should click the video above now because you need to revise that and see what this phase actually does. But more importantly, let's just get into what you're visually looking at now. When you look at the phases of mitosis, we move from prophase towards telophase. And what you are trying to do is take the chromosomes that we can see that are visible in this cell over here, where they are replicated, they align at the equator in metaphase, they then pull apart in anaphase, and you end up with two identical cells in the telophase stage, and you finish up with cytokinesis, which is the separating of the cytoplasm. Now, in an exam, you may be asked to draw a table or differentiate between mitosis and meiosis. So what I've done here is I've made a list of things that you are always going to remember about mitosis. So at the end of mitosis, we make two cells. In terms of the chromosome number, the chromosome number is diploid. In other words, it has all the chromosomes that it began with, and we can also annotate it with the letter 2N. In terms of stages, there is only one stage, and what that means is, is that it goes through prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase just once. Now, where does this happen? It occurs in your somatic cells. A somatic cell, everybody, is another word for a body cell, which is every cell of the body except 
your gametes or your sex cells. Now, why do we go through mitosis? We go through mitosis to repair tissue, um, to replace it. And as I mentioned in the video earlier, we also use it for reproduction. And we use it in reproduction when fertilization has occurred. And I'm putting a little star next to it because reproduction also comes up again in meiosis. Now, speaking of meiosis, let's get into those differences and what to look out for. Now, as you can see, there's already a lot more going on in meiosis. Meiosis is a more lengthier uh, cellular division and a lot more processes are going on. So I'm going to speak about this one a little bit longer. But essentially, um, what you're looking at here is meiosis one and two. So this first section over here is meiosis one, and everything below this line is meiosis two. And the main purpose of meiosis is to produce gametes, right, which are sex cells, sperm cells, and egg cells. And to do this, we have to change um, the chromosome number from being diploid to haploid. And so that's why we need two steps. Because in the first step, what we are doing is we are taking our genetic information over here in the chromatin network. We condense it in these chromosomes and they cross over, exchanging DNA. We line them up at the equator in metaphase and then we separate them in anaphase finally and we separate the maternal and paternal chromosomes from each other and we end up with two non-identical cells. Now, I know that seems like a lot, and if you don't remember any of this, you should go and watch the meiosis video that I have tagged up above now for meiosis 1, and I have a separate video for meiosis 2, also tagged above now too, if you need to go back and revise that. At the end of meiosis 1, you should have two cells, and at this point, they must now have halved the chromosome number. So if we started with four chromosomes in this cell, which I can see four here, we now actually end with two cells here by anaphase. Even in telophase, you can see the two cells now as well. I mean, the two chromosomes as well. In the second stage of meiosis, we are not actually separating the um, homologous pairs or half in the chromosome number. Instead, we now need to separate these chromosomes um, or these chromatids from one another. And we want to have them as like individual hairpins like we can see here. Because right now, if this is a chromosome that I've drawn for you, we want to separate it so that it's individual like this. So we have the two individual arms of the chromosome. So as always, we like to make this super simple. And so these are the things we are going to put in our table if we're asked to do this in an exam. Number one, the number of cells that we have at the end of meiosis, remember, is going to be four, but they are non-identical. Hey, please remember that. When we speak about the chromosome number, we say that the chromosome number is haploid, which means it's half. So now we annotate that with the letter N. When we talk about stages, there are two stages in meiosis, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Please remember when you identify the phases of meiosis, you've got to say metaphase 1 or metaphase 2 in your answer, otherwise you won't be awarded any marks. Now, when it comes to where does meiosis take place, it takes place either in the ovary, if you are female, or in the testi or testis, if you are a male. Now, why does meiosis occur? Well, that is because we want to produce gametes. Now, if you've forgotten what a gamete is, remember that is a sex cell. We don't want to call them sex cells, though. It's just a way that we use to like describe them when we're learning. But gametes are sperm cells and egg cells or ovum. And we need to take that information and half it. Why? Because humans are 46 chromosomes. That's how many we have. And when we want to make another person, so we want to have a child or a baby, we need to half it into 23. Because another person's 23 will be added, right? Um, so if this is the female 23 chromosomes and these are the male 23 chromosomes, we want to take those two 23 so that we can return back to the original 46. And so that's why we go through meiosis. 
Now, as always, I like to finish off these lessons with a terminology recap. You can use these for flashcards. They make it really easy to study from. And speaking of flashcards, you can also get my flashcard set. Over 500 cards, it covers pretty much every single topic in matric that you need to prepare for, all written by me. Um, you're going to love them. They are also on my website, and you can also go to the website they're made on, which is called Save All. Really great way to study. But let's just quickly go over the main important terminology points. So we spoke about, first and foremost, that cellular division is occurring in mitosis and meiosis, but they do it in a different way. You're either going to have diploid cells, which have a full set of chromosomes, or haploid, which has half a set. Um, in terms of cellular division, if we're talking about mitosis, it happens in the somatic cells, the body cells. But if it's meiosis, then we produce gametes and it takes place in the ovary and testes. And most importantly, by the way, we really, really need to know the structure of chromosomes, chromatids, and centromeres because these three things play a major role in mitosis and meiosis. And you need to be able to tell the difference between a chromosome and a chromatid. Spindle fibers are also important because they are the ones that allow for mitosis and meiosis to actually uh, move the chromosomes around. And in a follow-up video, I'm going to do a topic called abnormal meiosis, so when meiosis goes wrong. Um, we haven't spoken about crossing over in much detail in this particular video, but I want you to know that crossing over is really important in meiosis. Um, and I do mention it in my two meiosis videos that are in the grade 12 playlist. And last but not least, I did mention homologous pairs and chromosomes that need to be separated from one another during meiosis so that you can make uh, a child that is 23 chromosomes from you and 23 from your partner. And the only way to do that is to separate those pairs or those homologous pairs from one another. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed because I will see you every Tuesday and Thursday. And that's all from me. Bye.